Hello there YouTube. This is the start of my 11 meter dipole antenna. It's got various pieces of aluminum I've rounded up. This piece, believe it or not, came out of an old set of aluminum crutches. This piece is a little over 7 eighths on the outside. This piece is a little over 3 quarters. This is a little over 5 eighths. And then this is half inch. This is where I'll have my adjustment. 11 meter dipole for CB is 102 inches, which is 8.5 foot. Well, I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm going to make this 106 inches because when you get lower on frequency, you need a longer antenna. I want to be able to receive down in 26 megahertz because I have an expanded radio. This will be mostly for listening. It'll be stuck on a bracket where it hangs off the side of the mast. So the top is going to be up against the mast. If you did this, you'd want the top above the mast. But I'm going to use it for listening. If it's not too bad of SWRs when I tune it, I will use it for transmit if I had to. I'm using a new dial caliper here. I don't know if this will show up. The other one was in millimeters and tenths of an inch. Well, these aren't a micrometer. These measure... It's accurate to a thousandth. Let me flip it over here again. This only measures like hundreds. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. See where it says 60 fourths on the top? That would be the same as a penny, a penny out of a dollar, one cent out of a dollar, one hundredths. But for what I use it for, if I need a micrometer, I'll get a micrometer. I won't say where I got it at. You can just spot guess. This isn't too bad of a brand. But it's a lot better than the other ones. The other one, I'll show it first. This old junky thing I used to have to put up to a tape measure. Because it only has millimeters at the top and tenths of an inch at the bottom. Well, I got tired of putting up to a ruler. This actually has your inches. I don't know if you can see it. it has your one eighth, one quarter, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, one. It makes it a lot easier on me. Plus, I have the dial I can read. So, if you look at the dial, you can see that. One eighth, one quarter, quarter. Let me bring this out here. One eighth. You see that's about an eighth of its gap. One quarter. It can be confusing because it doesn't really measure in a thousandth. You can get like uh, fifty thousandths if you study how it how it is and you study the math on it. You can get it to read fifty thousandths, hundred thousandths. You you can do that. It's not going to be real accurate. It's not made to measure a thousandths. But for doing stuff on my lathe or my little homemade lathe, like making stuff out of wood, plastic. It's going to be good enough. Because even in blue down there, it says it measures in 164, which also you go up, you double that, you got 30 seconds. You know how to read a tape measure. Some people don't, they're not used to it. I was used to it when I was a little kid. I drew all kinds of stuff. But if you read that in blue, it says just point. Zero one, not point zero zero one, ten thousand point zero zero one, a thousandths, ten thousandths, this point zero zero one, or whatever. It only reads in one hundredths, like out of a dollar, point zero one. But it's worth it. It's worth the price. It was like twenty one dollars. But back to this. I thought I'd just include that in a video. I'm going to have a bracket that's made out of plastic because I don't want to use wood. Because wood conducts water, wood draws water, wood conducts when it's wet. But I just thought I'd show just a up close pictures of the aluminum. I had to bore this out just to slide them out. And what I used was the sanding drum on my Dremel. If you use a stone, it's going to clog up aluminum. I had to bore this out just slightly. When I went in there. He measures, marked it an inch. I use my junkie calipers for that. I'll set it like to an inch. And then I scrape 
I'll scrape a line with, yeah, with this. So I have magic marker all over. So they're still usable. But when I was measuring this to be critical of fitting this together, but it's almost ready to go together all the way. So I thought I'd show that. Down here, lift off this. Down here, it's going to be sloppy. Okay. We're going to use some aluminum. I do have some real thin aluminum. It's off a tag, off a motor or something, or like a pop can. And it will still have a rivet in it. I'm not going to use screws. I'm going to use aluminum rivets. They're all aluminum rivets. I'm not using screws on anything. Screws are just going to rust. But to take up this slack, because it's mismatched, you can see how sloppy that is. If I can get it down a little focus. Let's go against this black right here. Lighting ain't too great here in my work desk. Someday I'll have it better. One of these fumbling videos. Everything's in the way. I'm running out of desk. i got to get this reel-to-reel -reel off here. And I'm also going to make a way to cover up my radio equipment when I'm grinding and stuff flying all over. But I'm going to use something to take up the slack. Because it will be connected electrically. Just like radio signal, I, I always think of it the same way. It is the same thing. You want a good connection. So I will have aluminum rivets in here. But to take up the slack, it'll probably just be a piece of pop can. If it's thin enough, I can wrap it just where I want it. Get in there where it's nice and snug. I'm going to put it in there about an inch. This way I want to make this thing as long as I can. So I can listen to lower frequencies. So it'll be in there about an inch. And I'll have at least... One rivet, of course. Maybe two. Because the way it's sloppy, I think I'll put a rivet across from each other. In case anybody else ever runs into this. But if you look around in scraps and stuff, th these are parts of antennas, old uh, beam antennas, stuff I've kept over the years. I've got the little clamps that go around here. It's got the nut and the bolt, so it isn't a hose clamp. You can see where the bolt went against there. So I have that. I do have the end caps. So I have end caps for this. That's nice. It keeps the bugs and the moisture out. You're still going to get moisture inside of them. Unless you taped all this. And I'm not gluing stuff up. Gluing then you don't have the contact that you should have. You don't want to put glue. Okay. This is what we had to pound in. The first video segment, I might have got cut because the batteries went went dead on me, but if I missed anything when I review, I'll make sure to put it in the text there in the description. This one I had to pound together. I had to actually use a little board to tap it together. I got it equal to the line. Got a rivet in it. These have a steel shank. Doesn't do no good to buy aluminum rivets with a steel shank. I'm going to search for some, though. But at least for the rest, they'll be inside. It won't be their aluminum contact this and this. We're not going to get that too picky. Here's the one that had the slop in it. If I use a piece of this tag, let me tag, come off an old drill press. I took the paint off the other side. And we're also marking if there's a hole in here where it goes in, so we do not accidentally try to put a rivet through a hole. So we have this mark, and I had to, it's not all the way around. And then we're going to put a rivet in there once that's together. But I wanted to show it before I slid together. It's going to be pretty snug. So we're off to doing that. Stay tuned. Okay. We've got the rivets in the piece. It's got the aluminum shim in it. There's a little bit of wobble. You have to really yank on it. There's a slight amount of wobble. There's none this way at all. Like a lot of pressure. So we're going with it. We don't want to put three or four rivets in it. If it was a real quality antenna, I'd make sure that we didn't have this problem. I'd probably use better material. But this is all scrap to get to here. And then the next end will just be the clamp. So we're going to do this doubled. This one beggar ribbon in the bottom. Two small 8 inch rivets here that are short. And they're short. I think they was even shorter than this one. I was afraid they might hit each other. But when I drilled, I kind of went off just a hair there. 
because I have this mark. This is in an inch. I'll add that. This is in an inch. And the rivets are half inch, so it's halfway through what's sticking in there. Another grungy job. It doesn't matter how many times I've used hand cleaner today, I washed my hands. This aluminum, because I washed it earlier and scrubbed it, it was all old stuff. You still wool, brass bristled. I haven't used a stainless brush on part of it. Uh, sandpaper, my drum sander and my Dremel, that powder, you will just get filthy. It's just a filthy gray black. But oh well, that's the fun of it. Getting cleaned up when you're done, but I can't tell you how long this piece is for sure. I think it's six foot because the other one's three foot. We only need eight, eight foot and a half. But I want to go longer than that. I'm gonna try to look it up somewhere. I want this tuned so I can also, I'll still be able to receive. I'll never talk there anyway. But I might as well make it with extra because down on 26 megahertz is actually illegally to be in and out of the CV band. You never know what you find down there. I have found great pirate rock and roll stations down there years ago. So if conditions ever come back and someone come from other countries, you will also find them on the HF amateur bands where they're not supposed to be and all over the shortwave broadcast band. There's been some favorite pirate radio stations. So we're looking forward to that this winter. If I ever get one, I'll record it. So they can't say anything about me broadcasting them on YouTube made a video because they're illegally broadcasting their stuff. Maybe get some voice, not actual songs. But it's pretty good. It's solid this way. There's a little wobble this way. But even if it's up in the wind wobbling, the whole thing's going to shake anyway. It's hard to show it. I'm trying to show it on camera. It moves a little bit. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure in there, but I'm just going to leave it alone. That shim took care of it. There's a little bit sticking out here. Doesn't matter. I suppose the person could tape this and seal this stuff up so the weather stays out. I'm not worrying about that. I know some people leave the end caps off the end of theirs so the water will drain through it. Also, there's a trick on the, the old beam antennas. A uh, guy was telling me about years ago. They even put a piece of rope in here inside their beam elements. And we had epoxy on it. And they would have it rigged up in the yard so they pre-stretched the rope a certain amount and had the rope tight as the glue was curing and that piece of rope inside of the elements because they were basically like just two sizes it made it more sturdier but I've never attempted to try it that's just too much for me but if anybody can hear the neighbors I gotta apologize on this video if you ever hear it that's how it is got a lot of noisy kids over there getting yelled at so We'll stop here, and that's about it for this part. This will be the first part, because there's not much left. The second part will have how I'm making the mount, and how it goes, how it's going to go to the tower, and depends on how long that is, and then we'll have the finished product up in the air. I have to find some coaxial cable. I think I have some, I don't feel like crawling up in the top of my big shed. But I may have some. But thanks for watching this part. Okay, we'll give a quick look at one of the elements here all together. 102 inches, 8.5 foot. Got the cap on it. There's a little clamp that clamps it. You got your split split in there. Self explanatory. It's just split on just two slots, so it, it's better than the ones with the four slots. Let's go down here. Here's where I piece it together, piece with the two rivets. There's a piece with the one rivet. So, kind of odd to have a short piece in there. And hard to tell it with bright light coming through the shed window here. There you can see it. But it doesn't matter. It'll work. It gets smaller as it goes up. But, here's a quick look of it. One of the elements. Okay. Thanks for watching this part.